Hi guys, uh, welcome back. I've got such a good message for you guys today, um, but we're gonna start with prayer because we all need it today. All right, uh, Father God, thank you so much. You are so amazing. The things you do for us every day, the steps that you put in front of us and the way you guide us, Father God, we are so thankful for you. Um, today we ask you um, to strengthen us in the Holy Spirit that we may be able to um, take back the authority that we might have um, intentionally or unintentionally given to the devil at some point in our lives. Father God, let those chains be broken in Jesus' name today. Let us take back that authority so that it may not block any of the blessings that um, that are hindered by that, um, that are waiting for us in heaven. Those promises that you have for us, Father God, Father God, those things that you have um, to prosper us, Father God, we, we take that authority back from Satan and we ask that you give those blessings to us here on earth as we follow you um, and walk a righteous path every day. We thank you for your guidance. We thank you for your love. We thank you for your forgiveness. You are so amazing. All glory goes to you and to you alone. And in Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, guys. So first thing God told me, charge, take charge, okay? Um, he took me to Zephaniah chapter three. Um, the heading on that chapter or the title for that chapter is Jerusalem's Rebellion and Redemption. And please bear with me because God was talking so fast today that I scribbled all this stuff down. So if I can't even read my own handwriting, that's how good it was today. All right, we're going to Zephaniah chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Um, so it says, Its prophets are arrogant, and this is in refer reference to um, Israel, so the Israelites. And um, you can take this scripture and know that he is talking to you um, because we are also part of his kingdom. So in the Old Testament, it's the Israelites. In the New Testament, it's us. It's the kingdom of God. Its prophets are arrogant liars, seeking their own gain. Its priests defile the temple by disobeying God's instructions. But the Lord is still there in the city, and he does no wrong. Day by day, he hands down justice, and he does not fail. But the wicked show no shame. Next chapter he took me to, Mark chapter 12, verses 10 through 11. And it says, didn't you ever read this in the scriptures? The stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. Amen. It is so wonderful to see. And um, let me just share with you one thing. Um, I'm going to just read what I wrote, okay? So, delight in the decision God has made that he chose you to faithfully follow in his steps and lead others. Fam my family last night was actually given a scripture. So God's been leading me to bring my whole family to pray. So right now there's a few of us that pray together on Tuesday nights and um, we come together. My sisters live in different states. So we do it all at the same time every Tuesday. Um, and God told me that I can't just keep this to ourselves, that we have to share this with the entire family. And our family, I don't know about your family, but our family's huge. I'm going to say it's about, it's over 40 people. So um, I have to send out a letter to them and let them know that um, God wants us to join um, in prayer as a family on Tuesday nights. So last night, God is so good. I was praying in the spirit and he gave me the chapter or the verse or the scripture um, in the Bible for our family. And it just so happens to be that Psalms 118 is that, that whole scripture that he gave us for our family. And within Psalms 18 verses 22 to 24, it specifically states, the stone that the builders rejected has now become the cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is wonderful to see. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. It is not a coincidence when God brings you to um, Bible verses day after day to confirm things that are happening in your life. Um, what God has really told me today is that um, we need to be careful. Um, we need to ask for that discernment. There's so much goodness in God. The only news that he has is good news. He doesn't have bad news for you. All the news he has for you is so good. He wants to prosper you. All you have to do is submit to his will. Give it all up. It's so easy. 
it's not easy because it's hard to give up things. It's hard to give up the sin that you're attached to daily. But when you give that, um, you don't give that authority to Satan anymore. You take that authority with the Holy Spirit and you can do so much more for his kingdom. And the blessings just come, blessings upon blessings. He tells you that you're going to get your blessings a hundredfold. A hundredfold doesn't mean that it's just a hundred times. It's a hundred times a hundred. It's flowing over. He's going to bless you. Man, so the first thing that he told me through these scriptures, point one, cornerstone. So I had to go look up cornerstone. And I kind of know this because I grew up in the church, but I wrote it down um, because it's just so important for every other believer out there to know. Um, God has commanded you to be the cornerstone. He doesn't want each and every one of you to be all the other stones that make up the wall or the building. We need to be the cornerstone, the most important stone that's laid on a foundation. So the cornerstone is the first stone laid when constructing a masonry foundation. It is considered the most important stone when building, as all other stones are laid in reference to this stone. Examine yourselves. Are you the cornerstone? Or are you just the ones that help the other ones stand up? Not that the other ones aren't important, but God's calling you to be a cornerstone in your community, in your church, in your family. You need to take that, you need to take that position. Why can't we all be cornerstones in a big old building or a wall? Amen? It's, it's going to be a mighty wall, a mighty building when you take that place that God ordered you to have. All right, second point. In this verse, it says, we will rejoice and be glad in it. We are not to be anxious or worried. He has ordered our steps. We need to walk out in faith that it may manifest as a substance, as fruit on earth. When we have faith in God, and we do his will, that faith manifests. It manifests as a substance. Those are your fruits in your life. I'm going to get to that later. I'm going to continue on with um, Ezekiel chapter 13. And he initial, initially led me to verse 8, but I realized while reading it that he wanted me to read until verse 16. And instead of actually handwriting this one out, I'm going to read it from my Bible today. All right, so Ezekiel chapter 13, uh, verses 8 through 16. Here we go. Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. Because what you say is false and your visions are a lie, I will stand against you, says the sovereign Lord. I will raise my fist against the prophets who see false visions and make lying predictions, and they will be banished from the community of Israel. I will blot their names from Israel's record books. We're visiting this again. Yes, your name can be erased from that book. You got to be careful what you're doing in your life, but it's so easy when you give your life to God because he will lead you. It's so easy and it's so good. He's so good. All right. I'm not saying this stuff to scare you because it's not meant to scare you. It's supposed to give you um, hope for the future and strength to um, fight the good fight. Back to the book. I will blot their names from Israel's record books, and they will never again set foot in their own land. Then you will know I am the sovereign Lord. This will happen because these evil prophets deceive my people by saying all is peaceful when there is no peace at all. It is as if the people have built a flimsy wall. Amen. And these prophets are trying to reinforce it by covering it with whitewash. Tell these whitewashers that their wall will soon fall down. A heavy rainstorm will undermine it. Great hailstones and mighty winds will knock it down. And when the wall falls, the people will cry out, what happened to our whitewash? Therefore, this is what the sovereign Lord says. I will sweep away your whitewashed wall with a storm of indignation, with a great flood of anger, and with hailstones of fury. I will break down your wall to its foundation, and when it falls, it will crush you. Then you will know that I am Lord. At that, at last, my anger against the wall, or at last, my anger against the wall and those who covered it with whitewash will be satisfied. Then I will say to you, the wall and those who whitewashed are both gone. They are lying prophets who claim peace would come to Jerusalem when there was no peace. I, the sovereign Lord, have spoken. Oof, that's some heavy stuff. God is telling us that we really need to watch out because we are in the end times. We are in um, that time that is coming so close um, where the world is just going to come to chaos. I'm going to read to you exactly what he told me to write down, and it's... um. It's a lot of sloppy handwriting, so just bear with me, okay? Okay. Beware of false teachings. 
They say all is okay in the church when the blood of innocent lives and children cry out. Outwardly, they seem holy, but in darkness, they commit sins. Witchcraft is prevalent among many Christian believers and teachers. Child sacrifice has to stop. What are you doing to stop this innocent bloodshed? If y'all don't think that the things that happened in the Old Testament with child sacrifice is going on, uh, you need to wake up. Um, there are many leaders out there, a lot of your government officials, um, and even pastors in churches and um, patrons in churches are heavily into witchcraft. They have infiltrated Christianity and the system, and they are sacrificing children. Their blood cries out. Blood is living. Why do you think we were redeemed by the blood of Christ? Because um, it spoke out, you know, when um, Cain murdered Abel, his blood cried out to the Lord. Um, the blood of innocent children really does um, cry out to the Lord every night, and we have to pray for those innocent children, the people that are being sacrificed, the people that are being abused um, for these satanic rituals um, to give glory to the wrong light. We really, really need to um, cry out as the body of Christ and fight for these people. Uh, they don't know. They don't know the Lord. Uh, we really have to use um, use our power and our authority that we have in the spirit that is so much stronger than the devil. And we need to cast these things out. We need to stop it. We need to mute these people from even putting um, spells or incantations on people. We need to bind their hands so that they can't do the works of the devil. I'm going to continue on. God will speak the truth to you for you to tell others. Pray for discernment because the time is near. Build up mighty walls to protect your heart, body, mind, and spirit. God will destroy the enemy, false teachings, building flimsy walls that will that he will destroy. So the false teachers build these flimsy walls. You want to be that cornerstone. Let's make a whole wall. Let's be a whole wall of cornerstones. Do you think that um, anything can come against that? No, no. There was no cornerstone built up with these these walls that they put up. And God was able to just take them down. Flimsy. That's what Satan is. He's flimsy. He has no authority over you when you have the Holy Spirit and you need to claim that authority and exercise that power because God gave it to you. Jesus died on the cross so that you would have that power. Are you a cornerstone that was laid down properly to build a wall of strength? Rise up to become the foundation of the church. We are commissioned as the body of Christ to stand firm against the enemy. Do not fall for false teachings. Do not become a false teacher. Word. That's truth. 100%. We need to be careful what we are saying. When God gives you a word, he tells you to tell people. And you cannot shy away from the word that he gives you to tell people. It's hard. It's going to be hard. But there's so much beauty in it. There's so much goodness in it because those who don't receive the word move on. They're not going to receive your word. They're, they just are not going to take it. But when you speak it, when you speak truth into somebody's life who needs the truth, they will accept it and it, you will have that opportunity and the spirit will lead you in what you need to say to help those people. God specifically gives warning to those who cleanse themselves in the fake holiness of Satan. And he is the false light. Don't bathe yourself. Don't bathe yourself in it because God sees that darkness and detests it. Satan disguises himself as light. He says that he is the bright and morning star. No, I don't think so. Mm -mm. My Jesus is the bright and morning star. You are not. You are false. You, you can disguise yourself as whatever you want, but we know deep down inside you're ugly. You were cast out from heaven and you have no authority on us. All right, Revelations chapter 13, verses 5 through 8 is the next one he took me to, and I'm going to go ahead and read that for you. Then the beast was allowed to speak great blasphemies against God, and he was given authority to do whatever he wanted for 42 months. And he spoke terrible words of blasphemy against God, slandering his name and his dwelling. That is those who dwell in heaven. And the beast was allowed to wage war against God's holy people and conquer them. And he was given authority to rule over every tribe and people and language and nation. And all the people who belong to this world worship the beast. They are the ones whose names were not written in the book of life before the world was made. The book that belongs to the lamb who was slaughtered. He knows your name. He chose you. 
He chose you. Your name is in the book of life. But you got to remember, like, are you living um, the life? Did you accept Jesus Christ and your Savior? When you did that, did you um, did you uh, give your life to him that um, that you may continue continue to have your book in that book of life like that that your name is in that book like you you've got to um really repent daily this isn't something where you feel so guilty all the time no the spirit leads you he tells you like he'll tell you throughout the day hey that wasn't right you need to you need to go to the lord and you need to tell him i'm sorry because that that wasn't from the lord that you let the you let the um, spirit of Satan try to wiggle his way in. You, you've got to know, ask for that discernment, that spirit of discernment. It's one of the gifts. Like he'll give it to you. You just have to ask, you know. And if you aren't receiving these gifts, um, really reflect on what authority you might have given Satan that's blocking those blessings from heaven um, to be given to you here on earth. All right, Revelations chapter 13, 5 through 8. There were quite a few points that he had me put down on here, okay? So first one, the time is near. Number two, these are the signs that God gave us to know that the time is here when it happens. Number three, 42 months of the devil and his shenanigans. He will blaspheme God, believers, and heaven. And it says, be aware, like I wrote, be aware of the world events um, because you really need to know what's going on. Um, we are in in times that um, if I was God, I would be so upset, but he is so amazing because he is so loving. He's not upset with you. He just wants you to come back and say, I'm sorry. And he has so many things for you. He, he wants to make your life good. But we have to be aware that we are getting to that time where um, where the world is going to come to chaos, you know, and he gives us these, he gives us these um, little nuggets where we'll know that the time is here because it says specifically 42 months of the devil and hit and um, him blaspheming the Holy Spirit, blaspheming his God, um, heaven, the people who are in heaven, like you're going to know, like you don't think that we're in the end times now. It might not be specifically within those 42 months right now, but we are getting so close. I don't know if you guys know, but the Pope has said two things that are blasphemies. Okay. This is outright not in this book. God did not say this stuff, and what the Pope is saying is absolutely wrong. He said that you do not need Jesus Christ to go to heaven and that there's no place such as hell. That the people who sin or, you know, aren't going to heaven, they, those souls just disappear. Lord, have mercy on his soul. I pray that he asks for repentance and forgiveness because that is not of God. That is not a biblical truth. All the stuff that is in here, the Pope is just throwing out the window. Why did Jesus give his life for us? That, that is a blasphemy. We do not speak those things into existence because Jesus is the only way, the truth, and the light. Number four, when there is visible and audible and tangible evidence that God is being blasphemed, know that the time is here. We are getting close to that time. Like I just told you, this is the person who... Um, dictates what um, the rules are for the whole Catholic Church. And he's saying that you don't even need Jesus to go to heaven and there's no such place as hell. If that ain't a blasphemy, I don't know what is. Number five, are you ready? Do you have the armor of God to protect you daily, to speak truth, have faith, and not fear the things to come? We should not fear. There's no fear in God. That, that, that spirit of fear is not from God. And these things that he tells us, yeah, it sounds scary, but guess what? We have authority over that. We have more power than the devil. Jesus has the keys to hell. He's going to lock them up. All the fallen angels, they're all locked up right now. The only things that are on this earth right now that we call demons were the disembodied spirits of um, the product of those fallen angels and humans and beasts of this earth. Yes, beasts of this earth. Animals and humans having sex with those fallen angels. They're the offspring of them. Those, when they died, those disembodied spirits, those are demons. That's what we have on this earth. They have no authority. They're not even the fallen angels. 
And if you don't know that, you need to call on the Lord because he will give you that spirit and he will give you that strength. Yes, he will. He will. I promise you because he is so good. Number six, is your name written in the book of life? Salvation is not just merely believing. Do you have faith in God? Even the devil believes that Jesus is the Messiah. Come on, is he going to heaven? No, he's not. You know, the one thing that my cousin told me, and I was just blown away because I had never thought about it that way. Um, Jesus speaks to me and so many different people, and God is so good. Um, my cousin, on Thanksgiving, he told me, you know what? If the devil asked Jesus for forgiveness and he truly repented, he would go to heaven. God is that loving Absolutely he would, but his pride gets in the way. Just like our pride gets in the way. We need to die to ourselves every day. If we don't die to ourselves every day and we just let Satan rule our lives, it doesn't work that way, guys. It doesn't. Now, what does the scripture say about faith? Okay. It says faith comes from hearing, that is hearing the good news about Christ. That's Romans chapter 10 verse 17. Okay? What is the good news? It's the gospel of Jesus Christ. What is the gospel of Jesus Christ? This whole thing from beginning to end, because God is the Alpha and the Omega. Jesus existed from the beginning of our time, our concept of time, even before that. You know, this is his word. It's not just Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the gospels. No, not the things in red letters. This whole thing is the good news and the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's where we find faith. If you are not reading the word of God, you are not in faith. You're just believing. Real quick. Trust is the Hebrew word for our word faith in English. Are we trusting in the Lord? Are we trusting that this is finite? This is the truth? Do you read the word of God? How do you claim to have faith if you don't even read the word of God? You got to wake up. The truth will set you free. It can only be found in the word of God. The Holy Spirit will speak when you meditate on God's word. If you don't activate the spirit, how else do you think you'll be able to discern what is truth or lies? You got to read the word. That root, that word is living. It speaks to you. If you are not going in there daily, even the days that I skip reading the Bible, I know. I know that my spirit is different. It's, it's aching and yearning for the truth, for guidance. Um, when Jesus was, um, was tempted by the devil and after some of his ministries, you know, he had to take time to fast and he had to have the angels minister to him. If Jesus needed the angels to come and minister to him, you need those angels to come and minister to you too. You need something to minister to your spirit. And that's what the angels do. They come and minister to your spirit. Call on those angels to minister to you while you sleep. Refresh you throughout the night. So that in the morning, you can wake up and you can stand strong, put on the armor of God and go on your day fighting all the demons. They will move out your way. They won't even want to come near you because when you point a gun at someone, ain't, nobody's going to come over and try to take your gun. No, you wave that spirit um, sword, that sword of truth. He'll run. He won't try to attack you. All right. But you got to be right in the word of God. Um, if you try to attack Satan without God, we already talked about this. You ain't got no power. This is why it's so important to seek God daily in our lives. Amen. He warns us of false teachings for good reason, because we are in the end days. And without him, we can easily fall into the lies of Satan. That you merely have to believe. And that's it. That's a bold faced lie. What did I just say? Even Satan believes that Jesus is the Messiah. That's not going to get you to heaven. That's what a lot of preachers are preaching today, that you just have to believe and you are saved. Mm. No. Meditate on his word. That's what he asks you to do. Activate your spirit. The Holy Spirit will guide you. Ask for forgiveness. Forgive others for you cannot be blameless unless you ask for forgiveness. Be obedient. Take back the authority you know unknowingly that you knowingly or unknowingly gave to Satan. Take it back. 
you take that back because if you don't claim that back and you don't take that authority from Satan, he is blocking those blessings that God, he has them lined up in heaven for you. He's got a storehouse of things to give you while you're here on earth and you are blocking it yourself because you gave Satan authority in some aspect of your life. You need to claim that back in Jesus name today. All right. God wants to give you your blessings in abundance, but can't release them until you take that authority back from Satan. All right. The last verse that I was given today was Proverbs chapter 16, verse 3. Commit your actions to the Lord and your plans will succeed. Amen. God is so good. He, he wants you to prosper. He wants you to succeed. You're going to. All you have to do is just give it all to God. The last thing I wrote was just a little word of encouragement for you guys because this was really heavy. Um, I hope that the Spirit spoke to you guys today and um, led you to examine some parts of your life that you need to give up or um, that you didn't even know you gave authority to Satan. You know, we need to give that up. We take back authority with the Spirit of God in Jesus' name. I just ask that you guys be victorious and fight the good fight. He has already promised us we will win. Have faith because greater is he who is in me than he who is in the world. Amen. I hope that you guys um, found some encouragement, um, some refreshing, um, maybe even some wake-up calls um, through this word. Jesus is so good and he speaks so loud when you just stop to listen. Yeah, that still small voice. It'll talk to you throughout the whole day. And this isn't just for me. This isn't just for prophets or for people who are ministers or people who um, have a big platform to talk to people. No. If you guys know me personally, you know I have struggled in my life. And I will get to that testimony when that time is right and God tells me to share it with you guys. Um, and I know I've given you little bits and pieces of, um, uh, of my past. But God really can use you. He can take you from the lowest of lows, even to the point um, where you decide you want to take your own life and you just thought that you were going to die where the blackness started to settle in and you thought you were gone and Jesus calls you back. Like he loves you so much. He just wants you to come to him. That's all. He just wants to have a relationship with you. You are not um, a slave to Christ. No, because slaves don't know um Slaves don't know the plans of their master. You are his friend. You are his friend. He, you know the plans that he has for you. They are to prosper you. If you know his plans, you are not his servant. You are his friend. He wants to use you. Yes, we serve God. We need to be a servant to others. Yes, but we are not a slave. No, we are not. Not like the followers of Satan. They are slaves. They owe him something. They don't know his plans. We know the plans of God because he loves us and he's our friend. He's our father. He's our rock. He's our redeemer. He's our salvation. He is a mighty fortress. He is not a flimsy wall that's whitewashed. No, we are white stones that are clean, strong cornerstones that make up a whole entire wall of those things. We are so much bigger than Satan. And you guys have to know that you have that power in your lives. I thank you guys. I thank you guys for coming in and just listening to me blabber on and on and on about the things that God has been sharing me with me. But I just really hope that it helps you guys as much as it helps me when I read the word of God and he speaks to me. Um, please continue praying for me that God will keep revealing things and give me that passion every day to share things with you guys. Um, these message are, messages are for believers. These are for people who already know God because um, God has called me to sow seeds and he knows that the seeds that I need to plant are for the people who already have soil ready for the seeds. I just have to make sure that I listen to God and only speak the words that he wants me to so that those seeds are good seeds that will fruit in your good soil. I know you guys have good soil. I know you guys have been like um, putting your compost in your soil and you've been raking that stuff and hoeing it and you're getting it ready. Just put those seeds in and let them grow because they are going to become humongous trees with fruits. And I know it. I know that you guys are ready. Um, all this stuff that he's been telling me is the same stuff he's going to tell you. You know, it might be in different words, might be in different languages, but he really, really wants to speak to you daily. And all he's asking me to tell you is just to seek him because he wants to meet you. He wants to meet you every day in spirit. He wants to be your best friend. He wants you to come to him when you have problems, not to somebody else. 
go to Jesus, lay it at his feet, because he'll pick it up and he'll make your enemy his footstool. He will make some good changes in your life. He will bring you blessings upon blessings. Doesn't mean you're not going to struggle because yes, as Christians, we are going to be persecuted, but it's so much that you, it's so much um, to be in the glory and the grace of God that those little things that are temporary on this earth, they're not scary. Oh, well, what are you going to do? Kill me? All right. You just gave me a faster ticket to go to heaven and praise the Lord. I just hope that you wait a little bit though, because I've got some things to say. Um, I'm going to rebuke that spirit in Jesus name. I thank you guys so much. I'm praying for you guys and I hope that you guys are blessed and living in his word. Walk the steps that he's, he's ordered for you. It's going to be good. Love you guys. Talk to you later. Bye.